Hello angels and welcome to another YouTube tutorial. And uh, today we are going to be working on a very simple image carousel. And we're going to be building this carousel with Vue. If you are new to Vue, if you are beginning with Vue, this would be a very good project to work on. And it's a um, carousel that auto plays, as you can see. You could use this button to move to the next one. You could go back to the previous one. Or if you just want, you could just decide to click on any of them and it would move to the picture. So this is a project we're going to be working on. It's simple and I'm sure that if you're new to view, you'll be able to tie in a lot of things you've learned so far using this project. So let's get into it. For this project, I've created an empty folder and it's called image carousel. So I'm just going to right click services. I'm just going to open a new terminal at this folder and I'm going to write, let me zoom this a bit, M, um, npm create write, sorry, and then full stop. And I click on enter, um, pick view, JavaScript, and yeah, then I'm just going to follow the instruction. MP, npm install. I know I always, I always have a difficulty saying that. And then npm run dev. Okay. Finally, it got installed. And now npm run dev. Okay. So it's on localhost 51. I'm going to go 51 instead of 50. Yes. So we have this. So I have this already opened in my VS Code. And not you. So we're just going to remove all the boilerplates and just keep it clean because that's what we want to um, work on. Just something simple. So this is, I'm going to go to app. I'm going to bring this down because usually like it like this. That's just my personal preference. I'm removing this, I'm removing this, I'm removing this too. So I'm going to open components. Um, you can delete this if you want. I'm just going to leave it, but I'm just going to ignore it. And the first thing we're going to do is I'm just going to create like a boilerplate and hit the, essentially the HTML of what we're going to be working with. And from there, we're going to move to the CSS and then we'll do um, add JavaScript to it. So I'm going to start with main. So I'm just going to say main. And then inside the main, I'm going to say section. And this section, I'm going to give this section an ID. I'm just going to give this ID called main. Oh, sorry, main image section. And inside this section, I'm going to give it a div. So as what we create, what I'm creating here is the where the main image that's going to be shown to the um, user or the viewer. This is where it's going to be. Um, so, the div, and then this div is going to have an ID of main, sorry, main image container. And then we're going to put an image inside. But for now, let's just leave, let's leave. Before putting an image, let's first give this a bit of styling so that we can... Okay, let's just leave it. We're not putting any image just yet. Just yet. We wouldn't put any image yet. So I'm just going to leave it like that. And um, next thing, directly under this div, we're going to put another div. This div would contain the buttons that are going to be on the left and on the right. This, this is where we're going to put... Um, this is where those buttons are going to be. So div 
ID is equal to BTN, so button, container, and then we're going to bring in the buttons. The button, um, um, sorry, I'm just going to put this, um, <laughs> as we need bringing in something. I would have loved to use that icon, but I'm trying to keep things as simple as possible. So that's for the left button. Then I just duplicated that. And um, now we're going for the right button. So this is going to be the right button. Okay. Um, let's see how that looks like so far. Okay, yeah. And let's just start what we have so far, and we would continue. So what we're going to do is we're going to say main image section. I'm going to say position relative. The reason why I'm going to give it a position relative is because, excuse me, this button, this container is going to be absolute because we want it to be right beside the image, main image itself. So that's why I'm giving the parent relative so that it doesn't escape. The relative and then with 550 pixel display flex. And then justify content center. So let me give it a background color so we see what we're working with so far. So this is what it looks like so far. So we just maintain the color. And then now let's style the container. The main image container height is 400 pixel width is 400 pixel then we'll say background color let's say aquamarine and let's save that So you can see it. So right now, this is beside this, and that's not what we want. We want it to, you know, kind of be beside each other. Yeah. Um, so let's start with the button container. So position, I don't want it to, yeah, absolute, that's what I'm looking for. So top, zero pixel. Um, hmm, do I want it to be, no, it, it shouldn't be zero. Top should be 50 pixels. Yeah. So then translate. So let us see, let's just see what it is so far, or what it looks like so far. Okay, so now it looks like this. So it's 50% down, but you, if you look closely, it's kind of a bit below 50% if, yeah, of this div, that is. So what we're going to do is we're just going to give it translate. And so for translate, I'm going to say zero, 50 percent and then so now it's, it's now directly in the middle then with I want it to be 100 percent and then display flex and justify content space between so now it's on this side and on this side. 
So now we have a good um, visual representation of what the top aspect looks like. So let's bring, let's, you know, those four boxes at the base, let's bring it in, let's create that. So in order to create that, we are going to create a um, component. So we're going to create a component for that. And so in the components folder, we're going to create a component, we're going to call it image choose pane. I don't know if that's the best name, but honestly, that's what I could come up with. So image choose pain dot view. So I'm just going to get a template. Um, let me just write something there, which one I'll just put image, just to be sure that that's working. Okay. I'm going to come here. And then inside our script, I'm going to import. Um, let me bring this image. Import images pane. And directly load this section. I'm going to bring in the images. Save. Yeah, so it's working. Okay. So let's style this. Oh, sorry, not style. Let's create the component essentially. So I could call this a section. We're going to create a section there. This section is going to have an ID of pain container and then we're going to have a div inside um should we keep this div okay so this div is just going to have instead of an id it's going to have a class so we go um, we're going to call this tom nil sorry tom nil container It's supposed to be an image inside, but we're going to leave that for now. And pretty much, that's pretty much for now. That's what we have for the HTML. Um, let's style this. I'm going to say scoped because I don't want it to exceed where it is at the moment. So now I guess it's called C. In fact, let me just copy this. So the thumbnail container is going to be height, 80 pixel, width, 80 pixel. Um, background color, let's also just give it aqua. Then for the pin container, I'm going to say display flex and justify content space between the margin top 20 pixels. So now this is what it looks like for now. But let's duplicate it so that the we can see the effect of the display flex. So now it looks like this, but obviously we are repeating ourselves with this and that's not what we want. So what we want to do is we're going to give this a V4. We're going to loop essentially and in view, we use a V4 to view. Yeah, so, um, so V4. So I'm going to say, um, let's say item index of, I'm just going to say one, two, three, four, just 
so that it repeats itself. You don't have any data for now. And it looks just the same way. So now we have what our application should look like. We have the, um, well, I call it the skeleton. Yes, essentially the skeleton of what's supposed to look like. So now what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to remove most of the background. I'm going to remove the background of this. I mean, leave this there. Um, and then I'm going to put images so that it, it looks close to what we're doing. So I'm going to bring in some images that we're going to be working on and we'll move on from there. So I brought in the image that's, or the images that we're going to be working with. Um, you can see peak one, peak two, peak three, peak four. And so here I'm going, the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, what the next thing I'm going to do is, I'm going to say import, um, pick one, um, asset, then pick one dot jpg. Yeah. Then here I'm going to say image, save it. Then the source, I'm binding the source. I'm going to say pick one and I'm going to give it an ID of mean image. So if we save it, it's there, but it's so big, but that's not what we want. We want it to fill the box instead. So yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to come to the styling. We're going to come to the styling and we're going to style the image. So we're going to say main image height 100% width 100% and then object fit cover. Save and now it fits inside the box. So I'm going to remove this so we don't have that there. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to create a dummy data that would contain all the pictures that we have so that we can then pass it into the image pane. So I'm just going to bring in the pictures, create a dummy data, sort the dummy data essentially, then we'll pass it into the image pane so that we, we can then loop through it and show the image inside. So, um, okay. So in order to create a dummy data, I'm just going to bring in ref from view. Okay, so so this is peak one, two, three, four. So this is supposed to be. And pick two. This pick three. Pick four. Okay, so I'm going to create the dummy data. Um, I just call this part as state. So const dummy data equal to ref. And um, I just go to call this. So it's great. To, this is going to be so. If you don't know what the ref does, this ref makes the page reactive, so that whenever this changes, the 
component would re render essentially. And so I'm creating an array of objects. Pick one. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Now I'm going to pass it to this. I'm just going to say dummy data and binding it equal to dummy data. So back to here, back to the images pane, I'm going to bring in the prop called dummy data. And how do we do that in view? We do that using define props. So I'm going to create a script, set up. That I was supposed to <laughs> expected that to come up as well. So import define props from view no small d and now I'm going to say const props equals to define props and then I'm going to say the name of the prop that we want to bring in is called dummy data. So essentially this, I'm just gonna say dummy data. And then I'm going to say the type is an array and it's required, so yeah. So now, instead of one, two, three, four in an array, we are just going to bring in the metadata. And it should still work the same way. So it's still four. It works. So if I reduce, let's go back here. If I reduce this, let's say I need, I save, you should see it's three. Yeah, so it works. So save. And now we're going to bring in the pictures for each of them. So I'm going to say image. I'm just going to close this. And then I'm going to bind the source. Then I'm going to say item dot image. Then I'm going to give it an ID. We'll call it thumbnail. And um, I'm also supposed to give this a key. So I'm going to bind this and I'm just going to say index. Yeah. Mm, okay, before, I, obviously, if I save, the images are going to be there, but they're going to be very big. So in order to avoid that, let's style the, the thumbnail before I continue. So thumbnail, say height, 100%, width, 100%. Object fit cover, and then I'm just going to give it the cursor pointer. So, yeah, and so, yeah, that's it. So, essentially, we've done the you know, the look and feel of this. It's time to jump into making it work. Yeah, so we're going to jump into making it work. The easiest one to do is the clicking and changing it and changing the image so that's what we're going to work with first something just very very um simple okay well not hmm okay no the simple one the simple one would be 
would we just you know let's move to the next image i think that's that's um <laughs> that's kind of easier to <laughs> to work with and Okay, so let's just jump into that. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create a, an index that would represent each of this. So some, yeah, so that when I click on this, it moves here. So that's what I want to do. All right, so I'm going to say const present image index equal to ref and this is going to be zero all right so now what would happen is i'm going to replace instead of hard coding this this is going to be replaced with the value for that we're currently using so that's going to be dummy data then I'm going to say present image index. Then I'm going to say dot image. So that should still work as the first one. So, so what would happen is if I change this to one, for example, it's this. If I change it to two, it changes to this one. So you get the gist of what's going to happen when we click on this. It's going to move to the next picture. Uh -huh. So next, I'm going to create a function for that. So I'm going to say function. I'm going to call this function switch button right. No, I don't want the function to come out like this. Function just leave me. So switch button right so in switch button right i'm just going to put i'm going to say present image index of value plus plus Then here I'm going to say at click and I'm going to call this so that's this. So now if I click on this, it should move. So yeah, it works. So however, you would notice that if I click again, it's going to go out of bound and that's not what we want what what we want is that when we click again it goes back to the beginning so we're going to create like a condition that's going to determine whether it has gotten to the end or not yeah so and that's what we're going to work on now okay so we're going to say if present image index dot value important you put the dot value there is greater than or equal to dummy data dot value dot length minus one so it means that if this is so let's say for example the length is is four items remember index it would end at three so that's why we said minus one so we're seeing if this is greater than three, uh -huh. what we want to do is that it should go back to zero. So present the value equal to zero else. That's where we want to do this. So now if we save, when you get to the next word, it should go back to the beginning. Yeah. Let's replicate the, uh, or the left hand side. So we're going to say, um, I'm just going to bring it at the top here. So let's just say function switch 
button left so for that we're going to see if okay let's just test it out with just the way we just to see if it's working image index of value minus minus so what we're going to do is oh sorry i haven't linked it equal to switch what's in left save and go and so it works so what we want to do next is to prevent it from going out of bound so we're going to see if present index dot value is less than or equal to zero so if it is already in the beginning if we are in this image so we want it to be here. Oh, so we're gonna say present image index of value equal to dummy data dot value dot length minus one. So it's essentially just going to take us to this index. That's what we're saying. Else we now see present the value save and let's see if that works so we go back back so that works uh, so the next thing we're going to do is we want a situation when we click on this you know when we click on this it should change accordingly so in order to do that what we're going to do is we are going to um because now if you can see the this this place this component is inside here so what we want to do is that we want when we click here we want something to happen in the parent what we can use for this situation is we can emit something from the child that the parent would receive and then perform a particular action. So what action do we want to do? We, we just want to change an image, obviously. So I'm going to create that function first before we emit. All right. So the name of the function, we're going to call this function handle switch image. Switch and this function is going to take in the index like because you see this index here so it's going to take in this index as an argument and essentially what we want to do is we are going to say present image dot value is equal to the index All right now um we go back here and then we're going to create another function here and that function we would call it mix switch image now we see emit Mm. Oops. Emit. Come on. Okay, you know what? Let me first call it, define it first. So emit is going to be define emit. And then I get to call it switch image <laughs> then i'm going to say emit okay, now then i i will now call say the name of what i want so is this one I'm, i want to emit and then what data do i want is going to be in the index 
So essentially, this index is coming from here. This is what I'm typing at the moment. I'm passing this index to this. This is what's going to be here. Yeah. So now I'm going to bring. I'm going to bring it here. So I'm going to say at click. Make switch image. I'm going to pass in the index. So now back to the parent, I'm going to come here and then I'm going to use a symbol, I'm going to say at. So what this symbol symbolizes is using this at is going to, uh, it's listening, essentially it's like, it's listening for an emit called, well, I'm just going to essentially copy this and say switch. So it's going to listen for this particular emit switch image. And then what do we want to happen when it hears the switch image? We want this particular one to fire. Let's see. So, okay, cross our fingers. Let's hope this works. Okay, something, something didn't work. Let me look at. It look like anything is broken. Okay, let me see. Okay, let me let me first. Let me just console log to see if it's even log. Let me see if it is getting here at all. Okay. Okay, so it's, oh, it's actually working. Can you imagine? It was just loading. <laughs> okay, yeah. It was just, I guess it was just taking its sweet time. So yeah, that works. All right. Now, But we have like two little things to do. First, we want a situation where we click on this, whenever it's on the image it's supposed to be on. We want to have like a visual indicator to know what image we are currently on. So we need a way to know what image we are currently on. And we're going to just, essentially what we're going to do is we're just going to give it like a border. And that border is going to visually indicate to us that we are on this page. All right. And, um, okay. So how are we going to achieve that? We're going to pass the present image, the, this, sorry. I'm going to pass this. Yeah. I'm going to pass this as a prop to this place so that when then we're going to check if the present index this is equal to this index then it means that it's time th that is what we want to visually indicate we're here sort of we're just going to essentially if this index is equal to this then we're going to change the border for this essentially so okay um present image index so let's just pass this as a prop and then put it here so here i'm just going to call it, paste it again so the type is a number Quiet true. Okay. 
yeah so i'm gonna make so i'm going to see i'm gonna bind this style here i'm gonna see border because that's what we want to style so if present image index is equal to the index so this is a if statement if yeah what we want is we're going to see two pixel solid aqua else let's give it an empty string so let's see let's see if that works okay so now it's already showing that we're in the first one Something like that yeah so that works and now for the last part we want it okay so let's just try this here okay so for the last part we want it to be automatic we want it to move to the next one automatically okay and how are we going to do that so back to our app we are going to just create a i'm going to create another state I'm going to call this date into interval ID. So for now, we're going to put zero. I'll just say null inside for now. Then we're going to create a function. Another function. I'm going to call this function setting interval because we want an interval that will be moving every three seconds so where I could see interval ID dot value is equal to set interval so so I'm going for now I'm just going to see present image this this is what i want to happen then every three seconds obviously the app is kind of going to break you see what i'm talking about okay so refresh let me bring it here oh i, I haven't called it sorry then i'm going to call it here you can see setting If I refresh, I'm here. And that should work. Oh, sorry, dot value. My bad. So, yeah, it works, but now it's not going to. It's not going to move to this side yes so what we're going to do is what i want is a situation where when i click on it when i click on any of this it goes to that particular place but at the same at the same time it would not it don't be uh, it wouldn't there wouldn't be this sudden movement like we just saw so we're going to kind of um create more functions that would make what we're working on fluid so the first function we're going to do is we are going to create a function to reset or and clear this interval whenever we click on any of this so we're going to say function restart interval I'm going to say clear. So this is where you see the importance of this ID that we did. Yeah, so clear interval. And I'm just going to call, copy this. The value. Then we are going to call this. I'm going to call certain interval, essentially.
So, yeah. And we have to, so from there, we are going to, you know, further, we're just going to break down these functions into um, smaller parts so that we can use that here. Because if this continues, you know, if it continues, it wouldn't be able to move here. So what we want to do is we want to break down each of, we want to break down this, um, what's it called, these functions so that it can, each one would be like, uh, yeah, we'll just break it down further, essentially. That's what we're going to do. And so for this right, I'm just going to say, I'm going to say function, I'm going to call it move right. I'm going to paste it. So what we want to do is we're going to say move right. And then I'm going to restart the interval. Yeah. Then here in the move left, I'll just paste this here. And here, I'm going to do this. Move right. Oops. Move right. And just And I'm going to do that here too. I'm going to say restart interval here. Okay. That should still work. Yeah. Go back to the beginning. Yeah. Right. So click because. Yep, yeah. Mm hmm. Uh, we go back. Works as expected. So, yeah, angels, that brings us to the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you are not already subscribed. Thank you so much for watching so far. And if you also like to see this in React, do tell me in the comments. And yeah, I'll see you on the next one. Yeah, bye.